Um, <clears throat> for those of you who are coming for the first time to this session, or you couldn't see me actually before, um, I'm Heitor Lessa, I'm a Specialty Solutions Architect. I deal with developer technologies on AWS in EMEA. So if you are doing serverless, DevOps, microservices, containers, all the buzzwords you can think of, please talk to me after this stage. I would, like, I would love to know you. This session has no slides. It's all code, right? So this is something you were trying. It's similar to what we did in reInvent, but now we have so many people I can see the end of it, which is, I don't know if it's good or bad. So Wi-Fi is critical <laughs> for me to work, and I really expect that to work end to end. <clears throat> I tried two approaches. One was to build everything from scratch, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out it took me two hours. So like, it's not going to be a great experience. So here's what we're going to do. Hope you agree with me, right? Take, take a screen, take a, I wouldn't say a screenshot. Take a picture of this URL. This is the only thing I'm going to use for now. And we're going to use the libraries. Everything is already there. Instead of building everything from scratch, I'm going to use this app, download the app, install my dependencies, and work from there. I will add authorization, authentication, push to S3, make deployment, test across multiple devices. Well, if the Wi-Fi allows me to, but that's the plan. I will, instead of actually showing you how to code and all these pieces, I will show you how to glue all of these pieces together. Because this is the piece that takes you time to learn. And this is something I had, I had to take my own time to learn as well. So the plan is to use something called AWS Amplify. It's a JavaScript library that provides higher level components for React and Angular. But because I love Vue.js, apologies for those of you React lovers and Angular. Um, we're going to use this, but there's one for React, one for Angular. There's pretty much, probably even jQuery. I'm kidding. Right. <clears throat> so the plan is like this. Uh, so the GraphQL session didn't work out, so let me bring this up. So we're going to build the project from scratch, which is, well, just download that piece. So I've done already, but I will show you. Then we add authentication to it using Cognito user pools. We create user pools that show you how Cognito works behind the scenes if you're not used to it, and how you can add MFA. Hopefully, the mobile signal will work in this place. Otherwise, I will not be able to log in. But you get the idea. That's where we're going. And then I will add the CDN. We go through the code, explain to you all the magic that the Amplify does behind the scenes. And we publish to S3 easy. And then we test the same application across multiple devices, just to see how they could possibly look like. And then you can do your own with something more advanced than just a Note app. OK, sounds like it's a fair deal. Nobody objected anything. So the first thing here is to do a Git clone. And that's something we did already. So if you did that, let me just remove this reacting. I don't need it anymore. If we did it, you would be able to see AWS Amplify View, but in this case, I named as London Summit Lab SP SPA. That's it. One thing I have to have installed is something called AWS Mobile. So you have two ways of doing it. You have the really hard way of doing things, everything from scratch, using CloudFormation and all these pieces. You can do it to the console as well, which will be almost easy way. Or you can do something new, which is I think is about six months old now, called AWS Mobile CLI. Think about creating cognito user pools, creating buckets, creating all the stuff that your front end may need, your back end may need. That's going to be done by AWS Mobile. We're just going to add those building blocks, and I will show you how they get added, how you can customize, and how you can use for other projects as well. So I already have this installed. I try to install everything before coming out just in case. And the first thing we need to do, we, we have to do mobile in it inside the folder we just downloaded from Git, right? So if you're using Wi-Fi, go for it. Now I have internet access, so play around. So let's go to this. If you're not seeing from the, from the very back, please shout out as loud as you can. I will try to increase this. So I'm in this folder. Now I just want to run AWS Mobile in it. 
and we're going to ask you a bunch of questions. This is really important. You're going to use a sample, so the sample is already done, but you need to know this because I failed with an Angular app afterwards, after now reading it. It first asks you where the source code is because we're trying to hook up a few nice little things I will show you later. So it's in the source. This will show you where the distribution project is. This looks like build, but that's not right. We are using Webpack, and this will be dist, which means after I run npm run build, I want to get my entire index.html with all my assets. Where is that going to be? So that's going to be in dist, dist folder. So we change this. Then everything else becomes the default, how you run the scripts, and then the name of it. So London Summit is fine. This is how nice it is from a mobile CLI now. It's creating everything I possibly need now. In the meantime, it creates. If you look at the package JSON, if you want to know more, all the scripts we possibly need to do local development, to do a testing, linting, build, everything else will be leveraged by AWS Mobile. It will read the package JSON and it will just do everything for you. Once that's done, which it is, I mean, trying to reduce my screen so I can read it as well. You're going to see a new folder code, AWS Mobile.js, and lots of stuff in here. Don't touch it. <laughs> All right? I love breaking things so I can learn, but sometimes I break it too bad that there's no way I want. That's why I clone a new directory from scratch. So don't touch that, and you'll be fine. OK? So we get this, and we get something. Let me see if it's over here. I actually order other folder. That's it. We get something called AWS Mobile Console. We can do this and a bunch of other commands as well. This will jump straight to my AWS Console. And if you haven't seen this before, this is a service called Mobile Hub. All Mobile Hub does for you is prototype an application and give you a zip file with all the basic stuff you possibly need for Android, from iOS, from everything else. So we are using this to do all the plumbing for us so we don't have to do by hand. So at least I can spend more time showing you the code than actually doing the hard piece. By default, you see that I have message and analytics, which we're possibly going to go at the end. We have hosting and streaming. We already have an S3 bucket created for us and the CDN created for us, already also dealing with the routing that you possibly know about single page applications, the browser history mode and all these pieces. That's done. Job done. But now we have authentication. We don't have any NoSQL databases. And we also don't have any user file storage in case we want to have a profile picture or user attributes or something that we possibly need. So how do we go from here? If you go over here, it will, it will tell you that you can add those features just call enable. So let's just do this. We enable this, easy. And then we enable this one. And that's it. We are ready to push. And we're going to push, and now I'm going to explain you the code. That's it. Job done. SPA is done. User authentication. Everything else done. We can leave this room. <laughs> OK, that would be too easy, right? Actually, this is how easy it is. Actually, when you do push or publish, that will run npm run build. We'll generate a webpack, will run, assemble all of my JavaScript, HTML dependencies, and everything into uh, this folder. You get my index.html. All my files, all my 25,000 folders that Node.js creates for me, very nice of him, um, we will actually be bundled now for better performance. So let's see how that goes. It's almost there already. And then we have something called AWS Mobile Publish. We can publish just the front end or, the, or pretty much everything. If you look at this now, there is a folder. There's no folder, so I'm lying to you. It should be published now. When I do a publish, I should be able to see a new folder called dist with everything else that I need on my application. In the meantime, that builds because it takes some time for Webpack. If I go to my mobile hub now and refresh the page, you see the other capabilities are actually quite there. And then I will show you something as well. In the meantime, that builds. If I click in, 
one of these user authentication, for instance, you will see that for now, we're only allowing email and password, and we also have MFA in place and a bunch of other things already done for you. But you can, from here, allow Facebook, Twitter, SAMO, and so forth. But that's go to too much incognito. We should have a definite separate session to talk about these things. If I go to my cognito, if you are very curious about it, as I am, in cognito, you see two things very important. If this is the first time you're doing it, I've done nothing here. OK, let's leave it there. Cognito has two main features. If this is the first time, I'm going to give you the tips. The first one, user pools, is what we're going to use. User pools is any user management password, MFA, groups, permissions, and all these pieces. You want to do a federation, that's how you go. Federated identities, it has some of those features as well, but the key feature for federated identity is, what if you want to have a user who comes from Twitter or Facebook or somewhere, a authenticate on your application, they get a token, but they may need to upload a file to S3. To upload a file to S3, you need AWS credentials. How do you trade a token JWT, for instance, for an AWS credentials as temporarily, so they can upload that picture to S3 or do anything else you want. That is federated identity. If you go to the manage user pools, you see I have a bunch of those already. And you see that it's, everything has been created for me already. I have my Cognito user pools I can use in my application. I have no users, obviously. And then I have MFA. And I can configure this, and I can do all the stuff I can possibly imagine. So let's try first to test our application first. And if it works, we see how we progress from this, and I show you the code. First, I need to sign up, right? So I will, for those of you who also like to see some debugging, I will show you this. Hopefully, you can see from the back. First is failing your mobile analytics because I'm blocking uh, ads and everything. So I'm going to be nice, right? And I'm just going to disable that for now. So we're going to sign up first. So I'm just going to give it a name. Let's say Lessa. We do something here. I'm not going to use my email, because you're going to see my emails from Amazon. So what we can do is we can use 10-minute email. Don't do this at home. You haven't heard from me. Unless it's, unless it's recorded, then I'm in trouble. Hopefully it's not. So if you're going to 10-minute email, that generates a fake email address that I can use for demos like this. And well, let's just use it. It's a valid email. Um, so you go over here, I do this, and I have my phone number. Well, that's my real phone number, so there's no way around. OK. Now is the time I get nervous, and I can barely type my phone number. Uh, OK, so I got my phone number. Let's try this. So you can see all these debugging messages. I'm going to go through all this. So Wi-Fi is working. Actually, mobile is working, which is good. So let's type my username and then my code, 86. Cool. So as you can see from the very bottom, you can see that he's actually asking a bunch of things. Like, uh, the user is not authenticated. We cannot, go, we cannot go forward. He's actually a guest right now, or she's a guest. And before I route anything, check for authentication again. Well, it sounds like he's still not authenticated. And he keeps doing this for a while, because I keep changing the views. Now that, I'm gonna ch and I'm gonna, now that I can do, my user is now confirmed. I can sign in and get an MFA code. I could have chosen email, but let's just use MFA for now. So 420302. If that works, you're going to see at the bottom that we actually authenticated now, and we have actually that user came from user pools. That could be using Twitter. That could be using something else. And then you have the user pool IDs and other stuff that you don't need to know for now. Because that works, I have access to a page now, and I can see a bunch of other stuff in there. That's as simple as it goes. I also can add notes, which is a simple thing, like uh, blah. I always use the same things. I'm trying to come up with new norms, like maybe full bar. Cool. So once that's done, 
I can actually go back to my, to my mobile, and I can see that I already published this somewhere else. Remember that I did a command called AWS Mobile Push? That's it. So that pushes to an S3 website. Oops. Probably not done yet. And it pushes to a CloudFront distribution, which goes to an S3 already. So this is, this is actually the heavy lifting done by AWS Mobile, which means the way you do front-end developing doesn't change. It continues to be the same. The difference is now you have all these little tricks to do all the plumbing for you. So this is the cheap part. Let's talk about hardcore stuff now. Okay. So how all of this work? This, all of this works because of this, apart from actually um, AWS Mobile, this works because of this particular library that we built. So let's, let's take a look at authentication. So you can go to the docs. Amplify is a library that will actually abstract most of these pieces away from you. If you ever built SPAs before Amplify, you probably know that you need to have JavaScript SDK, Cognito SDK, and probably a bunch of other stuff as well. And if you're using different frameworks, you wouldn't have a higher, high order component to do something like this. Just to give you an idea, when you are using Amplify, for instance, you can use the a configuration from AWS Mobile, export it as a file, and you can use this as an input for Amplify, and then you have everything already there for you. As you go along, you, once you configure that yourself, you can actually go, protect cookies, you can do anything you want. And then, if you actually use React, uh, bah, bah, bah. all you need to do is this for React. And then you're gonna have a user authentication already done for you, and Cognito already done for you. So this is how simple actually Amplify is in that scenario. If we actually go back and try to understand the code, because we've already done pretty much everything already, and I'm too, I'm too quick. So we got this, we got this. If I start opening up my files and start to see things, in Vue.js, everything starts from an app view. So you see that there's a copyright, fine, and then that's, I have a menu that always gonna be there for me, and I have a router. Easy, there's nothing really complex in here. As you start diving into this, you're gonna start seeing lots of components in here. You're gonna see home, index, and a bunch of other stuff in here. This is exactly what we see after we got authenticated. Then a bunch of other stuff as well. What's important for you to know is anything that's under Amplify. Remember when I, when I told you that every time you go to a particular view, slash notes, slash profile or something, we have to be authenticated, otherwise nothing's gonna work. So in Vue.js, we use something called Vue Router, but that's probably for Vue only. However, those log debug messages that you saw on the screen is actually coming from here. We're using Amplify to actually do all the heavy lifting for, there's probably three or four API calls that we have to make to get all this information. And this will check, is the user authenticated? If they are, are the tokens valid? If they're not, we need to refresh those tokens as well. All of these pieces actually take time. And you need to work with browser storage, you need to work with encrypted, encrypted stuff, and also permissions for that stuff as well. So once that's done, Amplify also allows you to have a, because we use Vuex for a store, it's pretty much the same as React for state management anyway. So all of this stuff is actually done. And then once that's confirmed, we, if that, there's no authentication in there, we need to authenticate, otherwise we just authenticate. And if we actually go to something more strategic, which is, how does the authentication work? Because for, at least for me, as a not front-end developer, this wasn't something easy for me to understand. Apart from the HTML stuff, we definitely get a username and pass through all these fields. We can do it in two ways. We can do it in the hard way, which is this, which is essentially saying all the fields should map to what Cognito is expecting, username and password and MFA code. Or you can say, use Cognito build team user experience for user authentication and let that handle get a return and you do whatever you want with it. We're not gonna do that today. 
after you get all of these pieces, <clears throat> you will notice that this is, this is exactly what you need to work. This is how difficult at least it is to do authentication with Amplify. If we do the sign in, you pass the username and passwords, all the fields that Cognito expects. expect. And then once that's completed, if succeeded, then well, you actually just change the view and confirm that piece. So Amplify, for, when you look at Amplify documentation, you might have the impression that we'll only work for React. If you're not a React lover, don't worry. It's working for Vue, and it's working for other pieces as well. If we stop here for a moment, when you go back to the Amplify, Amplify will give you all of these pieces. Sometimes in your application, you need to work with multiple components, change message between them. That's PubSub. Push notifications, the name says itself. You need to send something to the user, mobile, or whatever. Storage, that depends. There are many different ways to do storage in mobile applications or front ends in general. One of them it was actually one of the questions I got recently on uh, the previous session, which was, what if I want you to put some data into S3, or I want you to do data locally on the browser offline, but I don't want to blow up the browser, because they may use too much memory and too much cache in general, and I want you to do something like expire or something. How do I do a TTL? Before Amplify, or before a few weeks before cache was implemented, you had to do this by hand. So if you use Amplify, at the bottom there's something really nice, as often for forgotten, utilities. If you go to cache, and I will show this how this is actually implemented in our application. This will actually work with any browser you have, any version, and we actually work with LRU or list recently used in the cache, and we just use a normal store in the browser, so you can do anything you want. But more importantly, you can set priorities, you can set the keys, and you can also expire. So if you add the same data, let's say a refresh token or something there, that might need to expire one first than the other, you just use priority. So the lower the number, the one that would go first. If we go to our code now, we go to our sample, we go to notes, and we open up this one, you will see that a bunch of this stuff already in the application. You can see all of this stuff has been done already. Of course, don't take a picture, because you have credentials in here. Essentially, all the set items that we just discussed is going to be here. So you can use this, and you can also be sure that no extension will be able to access this because of the way state management works. So all of this stuff, you can do this, and it just should work just as fine. If we go back to our stuff in here, we did something called publish. One thing I promised you was, what if we want to try this application across multiple devices, even if it's not a mobile application? In AWS Mobile, we can also do this by hand, but again, we don't have all the time we need. You can do something called, uh, I think it's called publish, let me see. Oh, now I need to look at my history because I don't remember. Uh, let me check. Here we go. Test. See, I was doing all this before coming in. If I do a dash test, this may take some. Make, this may take a while, but this will spin up something called. Uh, you go to mobile hub. Go back in here. It's actually not here yet, so I'll just wait for now. This will spin up another AWS service that we get our code, and we will spin up in about, I'd say up to 300 devices, and see if that works across all these devices, and you actually give us an average on the performance that looks like, and we can do something. Actually, here we go. So this may take some time to run it, but I will just run it for wait. Normally, you see customers using this for mobile applications, but it's actually totally fine as well to also use this for any SPAs, because at the end of the day, you're probably doing React Native or something that might work uh, progressive apps. All of this works for all of these apps as well. If you start to get deeper and deeper into these things, just to give you how this stuff, more stuff of this works, 
if I go to storage, for instance, I see that I also have, actually, let me go to simple form. Let me check. Yeah. All of this stuff that I mentioned to you about storage into S3 or something, I could actually go to my profile, add a profile picture in all of these pieces. Amplify will know what S3 bucket we are talking to, what authentication we are dealing with, and we'll put the files into S3 bucket just for that user to access. So all of these pieces that takes a while to understand and trying to figure out how to do it is already handled. So that's why first download this, this project and actually go and try something around. In the meantime, that's working. We can go back to Mobile Hub. And we can also see, we're not going to see much in this one here, but I will try my best today. Let's have, let's have a look. Analytics only works in North Virginia at the moment. So we need to go to Virginia and see, but we're sending that across. My application is really simple. There's nothing really there. But at least to give you an idea on what you get there. If I click in Analytics, you will be also able to see how the users are actually working with their application, the sessions, where they're coming from, the uniqueness, and all these pieces. So you can also customize out your own metrics in general and so forth. This is, again, just to show you all of these pieces are actually handled for you. And if I go to West, actually, I'm not going to go to S3, otherwise it's going to be truck. And one last piece, just to be sure that I actually have it. When you configure CloudFront for an SPAs, there's a bunch of stuff you should know. At least, all, all, unless you want to learn the hard way, and that, that works as well. If you go to behaviors, you're going to see that we're actually dealing directly with S3. And what that does for you, what that means for you for CloudFront is that S3 bucket will always be private, and only CloudFront can actually handle for this. If you try, go to S3 and make it public, or try to change the routing policies in S3 bucket, just to get your nice view on your single page application, think about this, like localhost, uh, slash catalog or something like this without having this. If you try to change this on your, your S3 and you have CloudFront in place, this will break your application. If you have to rewrite the way your single application works, do it from the CloudFront. Again, this is being done by AWS Mobile, so there's nothing you have to do. So as a takeaway, something I would tell you is uh, don't try to make changes directly into S3 buckets. I've been there. Do through CloudFront. Anything that's routing or caching, do from here. The last question is, what if I want to do CI CD? What, what if I want to do a pipeline to deploy all of this? We have two options. Either you use something called uh, CodeStar, which is a service that will do all the prototyping for you, and then off you go. You can, you can do it from there. Or because this is so simple, just a single page application, you can just use CodeBuild to actually handle all this for you. So I'm just going to give you a sample of a pipeline that's done for service applications, but you can change this just for single page applications. I haven't open sourced this, but if you want, come here after the session, and then I can give a zip for you. So if I, if I go very quickly to, let's say, demos, and I do something like this. Again, this is a template engine. You don't have to know about these things. The only thing you have to know is how to build a pipeline end to end and I'll give you the files. So I'm just going to generate a pipeline for now. And that's it, really. If I go over here, never mind the make file. The only files you need is two to actually build a pipeline. One is called build spec which essentially uses a service called CodeBuild to do all the building stuff. In here, instead of having Python and all these pieces, you would actually do the normal AWS mobile init or AWS mobile push test, these type of things. And then in the build perspective, you could, you could either do something like npm run build or simply AWS mobile 
uh, push or publish. This will actually handle the build for you. This will handle, if anyone does a git push to a GitHub or code commit, this build will actually be generated and be run on each git commit that you actually do it. And then if you want to get hardcore, you do something like this. This is more production. You don't have to do it for now. But it's for you to at least leave the session to know what plumbing do I need to know and how can I go from here. This is a CloudFormation template that generates a pipeline for any service applications that runs on AWS today near to production. It's going to be open source yet. But the only thing you need to know is uh, this is going to be your source, where your source comes from, the Git, the bucket, S3 bucket for your artifacts, your disk, your index HTML, you name it. That build spec that I told you, this will create a build, code build project, and we actually use a Docker image to do whatever you want. You can use a custom Docker image to already have AWS Mobile installed, Webpack installed, any dependencies that you need. And then later, once you get all of these pieces, this is the fun part. I like to build everything using infrastructure as code as much as possible, but you can build it through the console as well. This is how you would build a pipeline for a service application that you have source, you have build, and you have all of these pieces. This already creates beta, gamma production for you, integration tasks, and all these pieces that you can imagine. You just need to replace this to only use AWS Mobile, or your front-end framework that you're likely to use. So this would be a gift. Happy to give a zip for you today. Or if you can wait a couple of weeks, I'll open source this, and then you can have it. How does that look like after finished? Uh, code pipeline. Hopefully, I don't have anything sensitive. you will see something like this. This is a true microservice that I built for a workshop. And you will see a pipeline like this for your single page applications that you can also have test across your mobile apps and pretty much everything. We get from code commit. We build using code build, AWS mobile, and all these pieces. We deploy a test stack just to test our application. But because it's mobile, you don't need it. Then you have a beta, gamma, and production, you have a manual approval. So that single command will do all of this for you. Use this as a blueprint and adjust for what you need afterwards. To finish, because I told you I wouldn't be able to code everything, unfortunately. This is what you get when you do, when you do a publish dash dash test. This will actually run another database service behind the scenes that will do a test across all these mobiles. It sounds like Google Pixel failed. Sounds like I'm not going to run on Google, against Google Pixel. And every other app is already here. You can get more metrics. And you can get even deeper into the metrics on how long does it take. Once you log in, do you take a screenshot? Do you make a video of it? Or what you want to do it? So this is called device. I forgot the name now for a minute. I'll remember. Let me go back in here. Really, this is what I have for today. In general, from going from the very, very beginning to something more advanced. If you are interested in, in seeing myself or actually a bunch of other people as well coding this live with more time, because we need at least up to two hours, there's something that I, I told in the previous, the previous session. You can take a note of this. Every second Tuesday, 4 PM, London time, we're going to have a live coding sessions for Europe about everything that's serverless. Think about Node.js, Python, Go, Java, how to build APIs, how to do pagination, GraphQL stuff, building single page applications, doing something more advanced than the usual. This is the channel. It's going to be on twitch.tv slash AWS. Other than this, thank you for being here and choose so far. Thank you for praying with me because the Wi-Fi worked and the internet worked. And, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it for that. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.